Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a lovely Thursday morning. So today what I'd like to discuss is the FTC growing a pair and taking action against companies that have illegal warranty terms. Before we get into this press release from the FTC, I want to go over these two distinct separate concepts because they often get conflated and confused. Modern right to repair laws as they exist and as they're being pushed in legislatures are about ensuring that you have access to parts, schematics, and things that are necessary to be able to fix what you own. So an example here would be if there is a $2,000 laptop sitting in front of me and the manufacturer offers a repair service for $1,800 or something like that, but the only problem with the machine is a $5 chip, I should be able to buy that $5 chip and then take this device to a technician of my choosing, whether they're charging $100 or $500, and have them be able to do the repair for me. The manufacturer should not be able to go out of their way and ensure that nobody can buy the parts necessary to fix their devices so that you're forced to go back to them and buy a new one. That is what current light to repair laws are seeking to address. Now there's another segment of this was a, was already dressed back in the 1970s, and that has to do with warranty. So there are manufacturers that will try to void your warranty if you service the device yourself. This is something that has been illegal since the 70s. Many people have said that modern right to repair laws are seeking to force manufacturers to do repairs under warranty, even if somebody else fixed it. And we're not looking for that at all, because again, somebody else already did that 45 years ago. Now, to get into that, what we mean by that is that the burden of proof is on the manufacturer to demonstrate that we did something wrong when we were working on the device. So for instance, if I were to take out my hard drive and put a solid state drive in it, and then six months later, my screen dies, I didn't do anything wrong. However, if my idea of servicing my laptop were to do something like this to it, then the manufacturer would be correct in saying that we are not going to cover this under warranty, this is user or technician caused damage, and as a result, no warranty for you. But the burden of proof is on the manufacturer to demonstrate that what was done to the product broke it. And a great example of this over the, the past several years have been with the MacBook Pro from 2011 that had graphics chip issues. So Apple issued an extended warranty program for people that had a defective graphics chip, and many people that came to my store would want me to fix this. And I would tell them, there's no need to pay me $250 to fix this, Apple will do it for free. They would go to Apple and they would hear, well, you know what, you voided your warranty because you replaced your hard drive with an SSD. Since you replaced your hard drive with an SSD, we're not covering your motherboard under warranty. And that's obviously a complete crock of shit because there's no way that you're going to prove that the user replacing their SSD is the reason that the graphics chip on the board malfunctioned. That's ridiculous. Manufacturers cannot say just by virtue of the fact that you opened the product that you avoided its warranty. That has been illegal for over 40 years and because much of our government has no teeth, they have not been enforcing it. So this comes from the FTC. And it says they're taking action against Harley-Davidson and Westinghouse for illegally restricting cons consumers' right to repair, which is a cool thing. And again, the reason I explain the difference between those two different segments of right to repair is because right to repair is invoked in this argument, in this article. And a lot of the times people who peddle in misinformation will try to say that right to repair is about forcing the manufacturer to fix something under warranty, even if I broke it. And just again, to be clear, if I do this to my device, right to repair does not say that the manufacturer now has to fix it. That is a warranty that has been voided. Now, we have been engaging a lot with the FTC over the past year and a half, myself through an attorney and my nonprofit, and some of the groups and subsidiaries that I've issued grants to over the past year and a half, and we have been making a lot of progress here. They came out with a over 50-page report going over why much of the arguments that come from opposition lobbyists are false. They have said that it's illegal to condition warranty on certified repair, and this is another step forward here. So the FTC's complaint charges that the company's warranties included terms that convey that the warranty is void if consumers use independent dealers for parts or repairs. The FTC is ordering Harley-Davidson and Westinghouse to fix warranties by removing illegal terms and recognizing the right to repair, to come clean with consumers, and to ensure that dealers compete fairly with independent third parties. Consumers deserve choice when it comes to repairing their products, and independent dealers deserve a chance to compete, said Samuel Levine, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection. These orders require Harley and Westinghouse to fix their warranties, come clean with consumers, and ensure fair competition with independent repair providers. Other companies that squelch consumers' right to repair should take notice. Wisconsin-based Harley-Davidson sells motorcycles, and Ohio-based MW Investment sells Westinghouse brand outdoor power generators and related equipment. They go on about the nixing the fix report, which I just went over in a video that I did a while ago. They mentioned the nixing the fix report, which I went over here, which is again, 50 pages going over how much of what you hear from the opposition lobbyists when they talk about safety and security and security is just bullshit. And they, they, they said, we have not seen any evidence for any of this. I'm very glad they did that report. 
And it says, according to the FTC's complaints, both companies were imposing illegal warranty terms that voided customers' warranties if they used anyone other than the companies and their authorized dealers to get parts or repairs for products. The FTC also alleged that Harley-Davidson failed to fully disclose all of the terms of its warranty in a single document, requiring consumers to contact an authorized dealership for full details. The FTC alleges that these terms harm consumers and competition in multiple ways, including restricting consumers' choices, consumers who buy a product covered by the warranty do so to protect their own interests, not the manufacturers, the company's warranties improperly implied that as a condition of maintaining warranty coverage, Consumers had to use the company's part or services for repairs, which again is something that has been illegal since the 70s. Costing consumers more money. By telling consumers their warranty is voided if they choose third-party parts or repair services, the companies force consumers to use potentially more expensive options provided by the manufacturer. This violates the Warranty Act, which prohibits these clauses unless a manufacturer provides the required parts or services for free under the warranty or is granted an exemption from the FTC. Undercutting independent dealers. The Warranties Act tying prohibition protects not just consumers, but also independent repairers and the manufacturers of aftermarket parts. By conditioning their warranties on the use of authorized service providers and branded parts, the companies infringed the right of independent repairs and manufacturers to compete on a level playing field and reducing resiliency. Consumers rely on the company's products for emergency power and transportation. Robust competition from aftermarket part manufacturers is critical to ensuring that consumers get the replacement parts they need when they need them and are not at the mercy of branded supply chains. More resilient and repairable products also lead to less waste in the form of products that could otherwise be fixed, which is true. Now we're going to get to the point where I can't help but criticize this a little bit. While I am very happy that the FTC is finding their teeth, finding their backbone, finding their balls, I am very happy about that. There is one point in this article that just honestly still makes me feel like I want to blow my top. And I'm open to input from all of you on whether or not you believe that my salt here is fair. So it says enforcement actions. Remember this FTC, they are, let's see how they're going to enforce this. Let's see what kind of penalties, how they're going to be in trouble for what it is that these companies did wrong. Under the FTC Act and the Warranty Act, the FTC has the authority to take action against companies violating consumer protection laws, including those engaging in unfair or deceptive acts or practices. The FTC's orders in these cases prohibit further violations. They'll be prohibited from further violations. And if the, you know, if they violate the terms, the FTC will be able to seek civil penalties of up to $46,570 per violation in federal court. To be clear, they, they, they word it like that could be sought in the future, but is not being sought now. Recognizing consumers' right to repair, both companies will be required to add specific language to their warranty saying taking your product to be serviced by a repair shop that is not affiliated with or an authorized dealer will not void the warranty. Also using third-party parts will not void the warranty. Come clean with consumers. Both companies must send and post notices informing customers that their warranties will remain in effect even if they buy aftermarket parts or patronize independent repairs and alert dealers to compete fairly. Both companies are being required to direct authorized dealers to remove deceptive display materials, train and monitor employees, and not promote branded parts and dealers over third parties, which is a step forward. However, you must understand that my business at the time had one employee, me, was fined more money by the city of New York for not having my license number on a business card than Harley Davidson or Westinghouse are being fined for breaking federal law for almost a decade. I was fined more money for disobeying a law that my city could not even cite when I called, emailed, and wrote certified letters to the commissioner than Westinghouse and Harley Davidson are being fined for breaking federal law for a decade. <laughs> And it, it really is important for me to bring this up because you have to understand where people's cynicism with government lies, why people are so cynical, why there are so many people that don't bother engaging with their legislators, why there are people that don't bother voting, why there are people that are so disengaged with the system entirely that they don't bother. Because one of the things I talk about on this channel is how even just making a teeny tiny little bit of effort, you can get something done. As I said, getting a bill passed in New York State it get, we really are able to make progress when people actually engage with the system. But one thing you'll notice, and one thing you may you get if you watch my videos, is I don't insult you for not engaging with the system. I understand why you don't engage with the system, because you believe that it is fundamentally a waste of your time and that nothing can change. And like, honestly, I understand where you get, where you get that perspective from. Again, me personally, I, I, this could be different from how you feel, but when I see that I can get a larger fine for not having my business license number, which is on a giant sign in my store, on a business card, gets me a larger fine than Harley Davidson or Westinghouse get 
when they break federal law for over a decade? God damn. I mean, I mean that, that's just one of those things that really just feels like an absolute swift kick in the nuts. Am I happy that they are demanding that they change their warranty terms? Absolutely. Am I happy that they're releasing a press release about it? That's cool. That's progress. And honestly, I should be able to be happy about that. I just can't help but be a little bit salty. Again, there's really no incentive structure for a company to do the right thing if there's not even a two-digit fine for doing the wrong thing. Like 50 bucks. Fine them 50 bucks. 20 bucks. Something to make me feel better. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And again, thank you very much to the